Good day, Minecraftians. Purple Mentat here, bringing you episode 21 of my Clouds of Darkness Let's Play. Today, I have a finished sorting system. One change I had to make from last time was I had to put the vanilla chest over here, because for some reason that I cannot explain, vanilla items were ending up in the extra utilities box when they came through instead of going all the way over here to where vanilla was at the time. I still have no idea why this was happening, however, it was, so I fixed it by moving the chest. Alrighty, what do I want to accomplish today? Well, I'd love to get to the Urgas because I want to get some gassed tears. However, there's a few things that I want to take care of beforehand. Primarily on that list is the Extra Utilities questline in Challenges of the Beings to make magical wood. Now. I need 8 magical wood for the quest, and 12 magical wood to do everything that I want. To make magical wood, I could use enchanted books, and in fact I believe I have some, so let's grab those and use them up. Uh, yes, I have a handful of enchanted books, and honestly I'm not going to bother recrafting them into something else. To make these into magical woods, ooh, can I easily duplicate these? Well, I mean, I could using Bibliocraft and a pile of experience. You guys have seen me do that before, though. It's a little, little boring, isn't it? Eternal Compass Atlas? That's new and exciting that I've never played with. So, to turn enchanted books into magical wood, it's four books, four gold, and a bookshelf. Well, I've got plenty of bookshelf, don't I? Do I not have them in here? No, I do. Okay, good. So, let's grab those. Bring them with us. You can see some random materials in my inventory for other tasks. I'm going to have some fun today. Uh, come on, it won't... Right, the crafting station. I made this because when it's on its own, you can shift click, but it's not respecting the up and down click. Is that just with the books? No, that's an in general thing. Darn, I got so used to that too. Alright, so it looks like these four books, despite being fairly decent, can only produce for magical wood. Higher level books are su supposed to be able to produce more, but that's okay. Now, these I could duplicate with EMC without issue. In fact, I could have duplicated the magical books with EMC without issue, but I don't have the requirements to do that yet. I am requiring myself to create an infinite supply of whatever I'm doing before I duplicate them with EMC. That way it becomes just a shortcut instead of the all-consuming focus of the pack. Now, as you can see, I set up a farm full of blaze seeds, which is ticking away and creating blaze essence for me. So now I have a really large supply of blaze rods, which is awesome. Now, I feel that I could adequately duplicate that. Oh, also, random minor side thing. I've torn down a lot of what the farm was doing because I have plans for those plots. And... I have torn down the cobblestone generator and the lava producer over here because I wasn't using it anymore. Therefore, it became pointless. As such, I'm going to reclaim this territory. It is now mine. Though I should... Okay, F7 tells me that it's fine for now. Get out of that corner and make sure it stays that way. It does. Good. And I packaged all of the lava that was stuck in those pipes into this stack of tanks. And I have in a fluid extraction tube pumping them into the seared tank. It looks like it's connecting to the hopper. You know what, just in case, we will put a cap on that side. Uh, that's gonna be... There we go. So now it's no longer connecting to the hopper. Just because that way I don't have to worry about it, I know that everything's okay. Life will definitely be good. So, we need four more magic wood. And to get that, we're going to use our fluid transposer. But, we need to get liquid experience into the fluid transposer for that to happen. I've got a couple of options where that's concerned, and the one I'm going to make use of right now is basically I have flight and I'm going to cheat kind of deal. We're going to set an input on the top here, and we're going to set our tanks down right... Uh, you know what? We will set them down right here, just in case. Just so that pipe doesn't attempt to do anything. And we can break this stone. Now I've got a couple of options at this point. I could grab one of these faucets, 
put it on the tank, and I believe it should allow me to pour right out. Uh, nope. Nope, that's not cooperating. It'll do so for liquid ender from the drain, but apparently it does not want to pour out of the open blocks tank. However, I can just take my fluid trans- oh, that's an item transfer note. Where did my fluid transfer note go? A transfer note. I, I swear I had one. What happened to it? Did I toss it in my sorting system? Did it somehow morph into a item transfer node when I picked it up? Did I forget entirely and never actually make a fluid transfer node? That's probably the more likely scenario. So let's make a liquid transfer node. And to do so... Uh, transfer node liquid. Oh yeah, we definitely never made one of these. Whoops. Can't believe I thought I had when I hadn't. Actually, I can believe that. That's exactly like something I would do. Uh, we've got buckets to spare. And I have a bit of stone on me. Fantastic. So, transfer node liquids. Oh, it's a QED recipe. Fine, if you're gonna be a pain in my butt. Run over here. Suffer through the worst noise in the world briefly. Okay. You need just any pipe up top. We're not going to use up the sorting pipe. We will use the lapis, one ender pearl, a couple of stone, and the bucket. No? Did I do that wrong? Oh, it's iron. Which I don't actually have any out of hand, but that's fine. We can fix that real fast. Now, there's plenty of other ways I could have done this. I could have easily used, for example, the fluid extraction pipe. Just stuck it on the side here. But I wanted to make the liquid transfer node because I've been having fun with the transfer nodes and the transfer pipes. Now, while that is processing, let's head over here and let's make ourselves a drain. And that's just nine iron bars filling up the pattern. This will make the XP drain from open blocks. And the reason I want this is I have 60 levels of experience, and from my calculations, that should be enough to make 12 magic wood. More than enough. Because every point of experience is 20 millibuckets of uh, liquid XP. It doesn't care about levels. It drains point by point, which is fantastic. Oh, that's all done already. Awesome. We're going to toss this right on the side of that tank. And you can see that it is moving the liquid XP. Maybe. Oh, I need this to be blue. There we go. Yep. It is moving liquid XP at 200 millibuckets a tick. I could make it go a lot faster, but I really don't need to. Now, every bookshelf that I put in there is going to give me one magic wood. Give that just a little bit of time. It's going to use up 8,000, so almost the entire stock of liquid XP, and create a magic wood. And then it's going to quickly refill because that thing's been filling up the whole time. Now, as mentioned, I need seven more of these. That's just going to take a little bit of processing time and me donating probably a good portion of the rest of my experience. If I do happen to need more experience, I can easily make some essence berry bushes, toss them into the farm area, and they will uh, grow and create more essence berries ridiculously fast. So I don't need to worry about running out of experience anytime soon. I was messing around with the... You know what? Let's give that some speed upgrades to get this done a little faster. I was messing around with the infernal tier again earlier, and for some reason that wasn't actually useful. It was not functioning at all. Uh, here you go. Have some speed up. Yeah, that's more like it. <laughs> um, the infernal tier was just eating up the items without generating experience. So I have no idea what was changed on that. I took a look through the config files and I don't see anything there. And honestly, I don't remember being on a different version when I was messing with it in the first place. So who knows what happened? Maybe I mistook what was going on in the first place. There's a lot of potential explanations. All right, now the problem I'm go about to run into is I'm going to have more liquid XP in here than I have a use for. That's actually a very simple problem for me to fix. 
There we are. All 12 magical wood. I am going to smash that. Uh, actually, no. I don't, I don't want to smash it, do I? I want to use my crescent hammer. Yes. That is a tool. That is in my backpack. I'm already messing up on the inventory, but hey, this is going to be an interesting episode because I'm going to start out with a really ridiculously overburdened inventory, and by the end of it, my inventory is going to be cleaned. Novel concept, right? There we go. And now it should uh, be pump it should pump everything back into itself, which is weird, admittedly. Um, I think I'm just going to lose a couple of... Huh, you know what I can do, actually, instead of all of this? So I can just put a couple of blocks, uh, a couple of tank blocks over here. And it will slowly pump out of there and into here. And that way I don't lose any. Now, admittedly, this is a little overkill. Uh, hang on. Why, why, why you, why you gotta be this way? That's alright. It's empty now. Life is good. I can smash these and be happy. Awesome. No, stop it. That's fine. Whatever. Take all of these and go home. Now, we're going to set up a repository to dump all of my experience into because, honestly, I'm just not using it very often. And I decided this was going to be the place because I do eventually, maybe, I'm not actually 100% certain on this, want to set up an enchanting area. For now, I'm just going to make sure that I'm collecting all of my experience in a nice convenient drain right up top here that will allow me to put it down into this pillar full of experience tanks that will be going down into my little basement area that I've created for myself. That's a relatively noisy process, so we'll do that off camera. All right, next on my list, let's complete that quest. Put my transfer node, uh, my speed upgrades back into my transfer node items. Claim reward. One greater reward bag, which gives us a Magic Bane Dagger, a rust-proof and sorcelled artifact, unfortunately not unbreakable. I assume that that's really good at killing some specific creature or another. I will toss it into my golden bag of holding until I have a chance to research it and find out why I want that and what it can do for me. Okay, now, next along the path, after my magical wood, it wants me to create Ender Cores. It wants four ender cores. Oh, I need four more magical wood. Okay, let me go get that together. I got myself all of the enchanted wood I need, as well as a pile of ender infused obsidian, and there's a whole bunch more processing, so that I'd be able to make the four ender cores, except they need the QED as well. Darn. All right, so commence annoying noise time with nothing that I can possibly do about it. Evil. Evil, I say. Here. We'll put that last one into place in a moment. There. Just get it working. So while that's processing, let's look at some of the other things that I'm going to need to do. I know that this whole let's get ready to quarry is going to lead me to an ender quarry. So an ender quarry is going to require those two ender cores, some ender infused obsidian, a diamond etched computational matrix, which is four burnt quartz, some ender infused obsidian, and four diamonds. Let's go make that. Plenty of ender infused obsidian coming up. Burnt quartz, on the other hand, I don't believe I have any of that. What mod is burnt quartz from? It is from extra utilities. Alrighty. Nope. No, no burnt quartz. Yep. I like this sorting system. Where is my... Thank you. You are all going to get become quartz blocks, and you're all going to get burnt. Okay. We're also going to need to... Um, right. I tore down my better chest's furnace thing. I'm going to have to put that back together real quick, aren't I? Where's my tech mods? Here they are. Yeah. Furnace upgrade, energy... You know what? Oh, max upgrade per chest one. Darn. Uh, so yeah, let's grab a couple of furnace and energy upgrades and a couple of chests then. And we'll set up a little furnace station over here. Why not? Energy, energy, furnace, furnace, you. Cook me some quartz. Fantastic. 
While that's processing, we've got a whole bunch of things processing. Just waiting on machines now. We're going to need a diamond pickaxe. Well, we got plenty of diamonds on hand. And we're going to need two endothermic pumps. And I'm actually going to make three of these to make the endothermic pumps. Oh, I mostly need more diamond etched computational matrices and some transfer nodes, as well as lava bucket and water bucket each. Well, let's grab our buckets, six of them to be exact. And we'll put lava into three and water into three. Here's our water. One, two, three. And one, two, three of lava. Excellent. That'll make speed things up a bit. Come here. You. And I am, in fact, going to need a whole four of these, aren't I? One for the under quarry and one for each of the pumps. Yeah. Oh, hang on. Ender quarry up. Oh, no, that's if I want to make the upgrade base, which is uh, kind of neat as you can upgrade your ender quarries. But we'll dig into that in a little bit. Here's our computational matrices. And uh, do I have the no, I don't have the rest of the gear in my we need that and that. So most of this will stack but there's a couple of bits that won't unfortunately and that means we need to do this entire pump recipe by hand i'm going to need 12 ender infused obsidian for this boy i'm glad i decided to make an entire stack of this stuff one pump two pump and three pumps awesome all right the QED should be done by now, and in fact, I'm going to get through the rest of the night because it's dark. And you guys deserve to be able to see just as much as I do. Alrighty. Thank you, Endercore. Now, I wanted four of these for a very good reason that I'll show you in a little while. Right now, well, besides the fact that four is required for the quest. I wanted three in the first place for a great, great reason. Ooh, epic bag. Come on, unique roar. A uh, coin of fortune draws in nearby items and experience. Right click to toggle. That's kind of nice. What are you from? You are from Reliquary. Turn it on and it glows. Oh. <laughs> that is brilliant. That's. I love it. I like the sound effects. I like the little. The fact that I, like, can't throw things away is going to get very annoying with the way I huck things over the side. But that's totally going to be awesome when I'm out exploring and want to collect a bunch of stuff. Fantastic. Uh, where was I? I was building an ender quarry. I'm gonna need a sapling. Bink. Uh, just, just one, please. There we are. Is that everything? Uh, ooh, right. Diamond pickaxe, which requires sticks. It's nice having a place for everything and having everything in its place. I did not want to put those in there. That is the wrong place for you. Did I have tools in here? I had a magic bane in here. That can go in the backpack. I don't know if I'll ever actually make use of it, but I want to have it on hand. We'll put the coin in there as well. Okay, so I can't fast craft with a, an, with a diamond pickaxe in the recipe, unfortunately. I'm going to have to do the rest of this by hand. I believe it's like that, and that, and that. There we go. One ender quarry. Awesome. Is that everything I needed for the quest? Yes, just the one. Maybe? There we are. Claim reward. Legendary. That's why I was after this. I figured there'd be a legendary reward back at the end of this, as it's a relatively complicated crafting process. And it gets me the Amulet of Strength, plus 20% melee damage. Goes in my Amulet slot, slot which I'm not currently using. Um, okay, good. Whew. Server backup hit at the same time, and I thought there was going to be an issue. So that's another, what, 6 to 7 damage on this Rune Longsword? Yeah, that's pretty good. I uh, actually you do one damage normally so I'm doing 35 plus 20 percent is plus seven so I'm hitting for 42 damage in other words I am punching the answer to the life universe and everything into things faces with this rune longsword that makes me so happy you cannot even imagine all right so why did I want those 
ender cores? Well, because ender lilies. If I'm going to be eating a steady diet of ender pearls, I want to be growing a significant amount of ender pearls relatively quickly, if at all possible. So this area here, uh, yeah, this one is going to become my ender pearl farming area. And these ender cores allow ender lilies to grow more than once per day when you grow an ender lily on them. So instead of it still taking seven days, even with the lily pads of fertility, these things should end up growing multiple times per day. And I should end up getting extra ender lily seeds, but that's not going to matter. You'll see why later on. I'm going to get another thing that's going to make these even better. Now, why did I want the extra ender pump? Well, uh, well, ender thermic pump. Well, because there's a ton of lava in a lake nearby. Well, in the Fortress of Hell. And I want that lava because reasons. One, it is the easy route to power, especially since they're literally giving it to you and requiring you to make a ton of lava generators in Survival of the Fittest. And two, because I think it would be fun to go to the Fortress of Hell and steal all of their stuff. So, we're going to make ourselves the a couple of other goodies. But the very first thing that I want to do before we go any further with this, before I get that plan going any deeper, is I need a dimensional anchor, which is made with a block of diamond and four gold ingots. I thought. block of iron and four gold ingots. It's even cheaper than expected. All right, then. Boop, 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 boop. Fantastic. Now, I'm just going to go tuck this guy in a corner somewhere. Uh, you know what? This is fairly central. We are going to break that bit of stone, stuff the dimensional anchor right here. Now... Let's hit our map and change the overlay to grid and zoom in just a little. Right now, this guy is loading one chunk in a square area. So just the chunk that it's currently in. If I have it go one, two more chunks to load a total of a five by five area, that will cover every chunk that my base is currently in. Except a little bit of these trees, which I'm not 100% worried about keeping loaded all of the time. But this will keep my magic crops and my sorting system, most importantly, loaded all the time. So we're going to increase that by two by pushing this button here. This changes the shape. You can make it a line that follows the x-axis of coordinates or a line that follows the z-axis of coordinates if you need to load a more limited area. This is highly recommended on servers. Make sure you load the minimum number of chunks that you possibly can. In fact, if you want to give yourself a nice challenge that'll make your server admin very, very happy, build everything inside the bounds of one chunk, one 16 by 16 area, and stack that chunk vertically as high as you can. That way, you're only loading the one chunk. Because, yes, you're going to be using just as many ticking machines and everything, either way, but this way, you're loading a smaller area of the world, causing less AI to happen, causing less pathing to happen, causing less lighting updates to happen. A lot of things the server just doesn't have to do. As such, keep your chunk loaders at their minimum whenever you're playing in multiplayer. I'm in single players, so keeping 25 chunks loaded just for the sake of keeping my base chunk loaded, not a big deal at all. Now, we're on to the last bit here. We want to get our goodies from the treasure room from the labyrinth. I didn't forget about those. And to do that, we're going to make an ender chest from ender storage, which requires an ender eye, two ender infused obsidian, a chest, four blaze rods. That's why I was searching for those so hard and some wool. But I have no ender infused obsidian on hand because I burned through it all and forgot. There we go. Now I have 26 ender infused obsidian on hand and we're going to we only need the one ender chest. So uh, unlike what I originally believed. And... I think that since it's only me on the server, I'll be happy to leave it on the white, white, white. Let me show you what the ender chest can do. If I had another one of these, no matter where I was in the world or any world, any dimension, I'd be able to plop it down, open it up 
and experience the same inventory in both places. And I'd be able to toss my inventory into it and have it get sucked out by that transfer node because I have the chunk loader there. Now, along with that ender chest, we're going to build the ender pouch as soon as I grab three leather because I forgot one component in my initial sweep. The ender pouch is a bag I can carry around with me that interacts with that ender chest because this is set to white, 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 and that is set to white, white, white. Now, those colors that I'm saying can be changed by using dye on them. For example, let me grab some purple dye. I bet I have... Do I have any flowers? Uh, yes, actually, I have a bunch of poppies. So let me grab two poppies. That should give me enough. Yes, and two lapis. I'm making purple because vanity. Make some purple dye. Now, if I dye, for example, the outer two, whoops, you have to make sure you very carefully target these. Now it is purple, white, purple. And if I want to get purple, white, purple on my ender pouch, because right now it's interacting with white, 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 I open up my ender pouch and it does not open the chest. I can hold shift and right click on that chest with this pouch to bind it to the same ender frequency. And now if I toss my gold ingots in here, well, they go into my sorting system and get sucked into the better barrel. And if I'm way over here and toss my diamonds in, well, they get sucked out and put into the proper barrel. This is what is going to stop me from having a ton of stuff in my inventory at the end of every episode, because I'm going to go through, I'm going to be able to go through and just do this and get rid of it all. And goodbye things. You are no longer needed or wanted. Have fun resting where you belong. I'm very happy about this. Very, very happy. Unfortunately, I got a little over eager and now I need to go grab some of that stuff back because I wasn't actually done with it yet. We need one more, actually two more ender items from ender storage. We ender storage. There we go. We want two ender tanks, which is going to take four more blaze rods. That's why I needed eight. And along with those blaze rods, I'm going to need a couple of tanks. And what else is going on here? Some eyes of ender and some obsidian and some wool. Grab a couple wool, grab eight obsidian and grab two eyes of ender. Maybe if I can spot them. There we go. This is why I usually use the NEI search to find things. There we go. Two ender tanks and let's be vain again. Sure. Why not? We'll grab two purple and another rose. Well, poppy and another lapis. Make myself two more purple dye. Now let me show you why I wanted these. If I put the purple dye here and here, and I were to grab my bucket, two of them, grab some lava out of here. There we go. I put the lava in here. And I can see there's about two buckets worth based on how however much is there. And over here, this guy's empty. But as soon as I add the purple dye, it will bind to the same frequency. And now it has two buckets of lava in there. And I can alter whether I can pump into it or pump out of it by changing this guy around. I believe blue on top is accepting and red on top is transmitting. So I will be easily be able to set up my pump in the nether with this guy on top of it, the pump will feed into the ender tank, and then the ender tank back home will feed into my lava systems. It's going to be quite a lot of fun. However, you're going to have to wait for episode 22 to see me put these items into use as we are out of time for the day. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you have, please leave a like, tell me what I did right, and if you have not, please leave a dislike, tell me what I can do better. Either way, please consider subscribing, and I shall see you next time.